Good morning, Canada, and welcome to the Denise Show. Today we're going to talk about paternity dorsum. Let's welcome our two guests, Dr. Watson and Dr. Pan. Hey, thank Hi. you. Hi. How are you? Hi. So, can you tell us a little about the paternity dorsum? It is the condition in which the body has a deficient supply of growth hormone. It is caused by the dysfunction of the anterior pituitary gland. So, what exactly are the growth hormones? So, growth hormones increase the cell size in your muscle cells and your connective tissue, and it does this by promoting protein synthesis. So, the audience is curious: How do you come across with pituitary dorsums? Well, it can be found in both newborns as well as patients with conditions such as tumors or head trauma. In the case of a congenital circumstance, it first becomes noticeable when the infant does not hit their key milestone. But if it becomes present later on, adolescents with this condition may not undergo puberty and might not develop sexually. So, Dr. Watson, do you think you can explain to us about the feedback loops? Well, lucky for you, we have a short video. Let's take a look at the screen. This is the brain. Here is the hypothalamus, and here is the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus releases growth hormone releasing hormone to the anterior pituitary gland, which releases growth hormone to the liver. The liver stimulates the secretion of insulin-like growth factor one, which promotes the development of bone and muscle. So here is the feedback loop, and here is the negative feedback. But if you had pituitary dwarfism, it would stop here. We will be right back after this break. Oh, mom, why am I so short? I wish I could be taller. Well, sweetie, you can. All we have to do is make a call to the pituitary gland for some IGF-1. I'm growing. Call the hypothalamus at one eight hundred pituitary now for your free sample. Welcome back. So, Dr. Watson and Dr. Pan here are going to conduct a little experiment for us. So, what do we have here? So, the water is going to represent the growth hormones. The powdered snow is the bones. And the funnels here are the anterior pituitary glands that may or may not secrete growth hormone. So before we start our experiment, safety first. Put your goggles on. So to start the experiment, we are going to take our funnels or anterior pituitary glands and place them onto the jars. Now we are going to take the growth hormone or the water and pour it into the anterior pituitary funnel. Nothing happened. Let's try this one. So as you can see, the snow or the bone is growing and expanding. This one probably has anterior pituitary dwarfism, where this one it grows normally. And that's our experiment. So, are there any different types of pituitary dwarfism, or are they all the same? So there are two types: proportionate and disproportionate. Proportionate is when everything is small, like your head is small, your limbs are small, your trunk are small. So everything's just like smaller. So they're all proportionate. The other type of pituitary dwarfism is the disproportionate type. Some parts of the body are small, whereas other parts are above or below the average size. So in this case, we have above average hands, feet, and the head. <laughs> So, how, what's the treatment of this? So, if it is diagnosed early enough, growth hormone therapy can be used, and this is when synthetic growth hormones are injected into the child to replace the ones that aren't there, and this stimulates the secretion of insulin-like growth factor one. If this is not diagnosed early enough, the epiphyseal plates will fuse together, and therefore rendering the growth hormones useless, resulting in a short stature of under five foot. So in short, pituitary dwarfism is when the pituitary glands are unable to re release growth hormones, preventing growth resulting in short stature. 